Yo, what's going on, buddy? It's me, that one we've heard back with part five for What If Asta Was in Fairy Tale. Now, this is a series you might be wondering, why is it at part five? What is this? I've never seen this before. And that's because the last time I posted a part for this series was over a year ago. So, as you can tell, it's not exactly something that might be on your radar. Anyway, if you haven't heard of this series and are new to the channel, or just, you know, haven't seen it before, make sure you go up here at the top of the right corner. I'll have a playlist that are linked where you can find all four parts of this series that are prior to this. It is from a while ago, so be prepared for me to sound a little different from different vocal cues, my scripts to be a little worse and all that. But we are here now in part five, finishing off the Galuna arc with Asta Natsu chasing down two perpetrators about to go attack the village. This, of course, being the giant like rat creature and the one girl who just throws acid on it to try and destroy everything. And Grey, Urza, and Lucy are in the village. So we have two of our heroes on one end, the other three defending the village from the inside. That is where our story is beginning today. Again, I do highly recommend you go back and watch the previous part, so that way you can have some more context behind that. But let's just get going into it. If you guys want more Asta slash Black Clover with us, make sure to hit the like button, comment below any ideas, or some uh, fairy tale with us too, because I love fairy tale. It's pretty great. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 just a show that not many people talk about, and if they do talk about it, it's usually this is trash. So you know, a lot of people actually do enjoy it, even without saying so. But uh. Yeah, if you guys have anything, just comment down below, and let's get into the video. Lucy and Happy had defeated Sherry, but as soon as they had, Urza would have run into them, and she was not happy. Soon, Lucy and Happy would both be tied up and being caught and kept within the camp, with Urza now waiting to find the others and take them back to the guild. Having broken the rules and gone on an S-class mission, both all three boys, Grey, Asta, and Natsu were going to be in some big trouble. Natsu had carried Grey and Asta back down to the village a couple days ago, with the two recovering in a storage tent. Natsu himself had then gone back to the temple to try and find what that source of the weird light was, and had fallen asleep in the woods. When the two wake up, Asta would tell Grey he can go first, saying he still feels kinda tired, falling back asleep. Grey, going up, would then find a villager, then pointing him towards a specific tent, saying his friends are in there. Grey would walk into the tent, as he would be greeted by Urza. He finds Lucy and Happy tied up. Urza would have been caught up to speed by Lucy when they had found the village, thanks to Happy. Greer would ask where Natsu is, but Lucy doesn't even know. Urza would declare that she's gonna find Natsu and Asta and leave the island. Grey wouldn't say anything about Asta, but he would tell Urza that he won't be leaving until he finishes this job. Urza would ask why Grey cares all of a sudden about this quest, saying that Grey himself was sent to bring them back. Urza would hold her sword out, pointing at him and threatens him. This would be when Grey grabs the blade and points it towards his chest, towards the fairy tale symbol, the symbol of their guild, the symbol of their bond. I will help the villagers, Grey would say. Urza would actually respect this move as she decides to help, surprised that Grey had actually stood up to her. She would then free Lucy and Happy of her sword as the ropes fall, the two of them happy and relieved that they're freed from Urza's torment, although Urza would then quickly remind them that they're not off the hook for breaking the rules quite yet. Meanwhile, Natsu would already be inside the temple. Having fallen asleep in the woods outside that night, he would be watching as Toby would report to Leon that Yuka and Sherry had been defeated, the two that Lucy and Happy had defeated the prior night. Zalti would remind Leon that the moon drip ritual was almost complete, and if someone stopped it now, they wouldn't be able to free Deliora. He also mentions that Natsu and Urza, as well as that one kid, the one who was able to completely nullify Leon's magic, would be problematic. Leon would smirk, saying he actually had another idea for use of that kid, and he orders them to go find Asta, saying that he has a little theory. 
He thinks that Asta might have the ability of anti-magic. Something that would be perfect in freeing Deliora right from the get-go. And then they won't have to wait for the stupid Moon Trip Festival to end. If we can simply restrain him and force him to use that sword of his, we can cut the ice out of over Deliora in no time, Leon would say. Natsu, overhearing this, would decide that it's his turn to fight, as while they're talking, the building would suddenly start to tilt. The floor begins to break, showing Natsu underneath it, him smirking he says that he's not going to be taking any of his friends. <laughs> Natsu tilted the runes underground. He he hit the base in order to prevent the Moondrip from shining directly on the ice to unfreeze Deliora. Pretty clever, actually. Natsu would jump up, blast himself into Leon with a headbutt, but it turns out that it was an ice clone. Leon having quickly blocked the attack. Leon would suddenly shatter as behind him another Leon would appear, this being the real one, as he then creates ice eagles flying them towards Natsu, who then blows out flames, sending both him and the ice melting to the ground. Natsu would go into a handstand as he starts blasting flames from his feet, melting the eagles, starts spinning faster and faster, sending flames all around the room, preparing to hit Leon with a dragon's roar. However, Zaltu uses magic to make Natsu go through the floor, causing the blast to hit the wall instead of Leon. Leon would question Zaltu as to what magic he used, but the old man just can't tell him. He can't lose Leon's control just yet. Angered by the sudden show of power from this mysterious old man, Leon would cover the entire room in ice, saying that, He's going to take care of that fire boy, and I will find the anti-magic brat. Natsu climbs back up and asks Leon why he would go through all the trouble of reviving just one demon. Leon would reiterate to Natsu what he had told to Grey, saying that he can surpass Ur by defeating this demon, something that she couldn't. Natsu would just be confused and just says, just to fight her himself then, but Leon would then say that she's already dead, because Grey killed her. He would then try and blast Natsu an attack, but Natsu would block it with flames. Well then you may not know Grey well enough. I've known Grey my whole life and I know for a fact that he would never kill someone that important to him, Natsu would say. Natsu would then run forward with a flaming punch, telling Leon that he's going to punish him for causing all these people on this island such suffering for such a selfish reason as he throws a punch directly into Leon's face. Leon's nose would crack as he gets sent flying back into the stone bricks. This would be when Yuka and Toby arrive, Toby being the one with the claws and Yuka being able to use anti-magic waves. These sort of waves that he could use to nullify magic. By this point, Asta would have already left to go look for Natsu. Little would he know that Natsu would actually be in trouble, fighting 3v1. Asta would watch as he runs up seeing Natsu use a fire dragon's roar, as he sees this other wizard use anti-magic, or what he thinks is anti-magic. Asa charges in as Natsu is about to be defeated by the three of them, as he slashes down with his anti-magic sword, cutting directly through the waves of this other anti-magic wizard. While this guy's ability of magic was to counteract magic by reflecting its waveform, it didn't cancel it altogether. Asta could actually delete magic with his power, something that could easily defeat this guy. Asa would bash the sword on top of Yuka's head as he then falls to the ground unconscious. <laughs> hey Asta! Finally made it here, huh? Looks like you couldn't leave the fight to me. Well, it looked, Natsu, like you were about to get defeated by these weaklings. Oh, shut up! I had it all under control, Natsu would say, getting all fired up. Asta would tell Natsu to take care of these guys together, as Asta would say that he's going to take Leon down. Now it was just Leon and Toby left. Natsu, of course, also wants to fight Leon, not letting Asta have his way. Yuka, Toby, and Leon would take advantage of them bickering, as they would pick up Yuka and escape with Leon cursing that he can't take them down here and now. Natsu and Asu would barely recognize that they had escaped as they turned looking for them. You you let them get away, Asta would say. Natsu, huh, me? It was all your fault, as the two would start fighting on the ground, rolling around. Once Leon was already inside the ruins, he would then see a masked man. This old man would ask Leon why he didn't finish off Grey and these other two fairy tale wizard brats. Leon would respond by saying that he doesn't have taste for bloodshed, but if they come in front of him again to try and stop him, he'll show them no mercy. Meanwhile, Leon was actually just afraid of fighting both of them at the same time. Luckily, Natsu had already tilted the tower over, so Asta and Natsu just had to find the rest of the bad guys and wipe them out. At this point, Zalti would enter the improvised throne room where Toby and Leon are. 
As he enters, he announces that the arrival of Urza Scarlet, one of the S rank wizards of Fairy Tale, has arrived on the island, Zalti being the old masked man from earlier. Zalti would promise Leon that he'll also fight, revealing that he has the power of lost magic, an ancient type of magic that should be even more powerful, if not equal to the power of Dragon Slayer magic, and that weird anti magic brat, too. While they talk, the runes would begin to shake as everyone's wondering what's going on. It felt like the entire island was shaking as we see both Natsu and Asta now attacking the base of this, this entire temple. Asta slashing at stone columns while Natsu just burns the entire place up. With everyone heading and rushing towards the temple, Grey would explain to Team Natsu that Leon's thoughts was by defeating Deliora, he'd be able to defeat Ur. But what Leon doesn't know is that in fact Ur is still alive. Grey explains that he used to live in a city located in the land of Isvan, a land covered in frost and ice, until the day that Deliora arrived and raised the entire city to the ground. Everyone there was killed except for Grey, who had been found still buried under the rubble alive by Ur and Leon, and that's where his training had begun. We see Grey's hatred for Deliora, the revenge he wants on Deliora for having killed both his parents, as Grey would then be taught by Ur how to use ice make magic. Grey one day had found out that Deliora had moved on to the northern continent. With Grey now knowing the location of his demon, he then heads out, despite Ur and Leon's protest. Meanwhile, back in the present, we see the groups getting attacked, but Urza, Lucy, and Happy would then let Grey go, telling him to go and fight Leon off while Asta and Natsu would be fighting Zalti, this person able to seemingly rewind time using this lost magic fighting both Asta and Natsu off at the same time. Grey would recall Ur's battle, managing to freeze Deliora while he was unconscious. When Grey had woken up, she would have told Grey to run, taking Leon with him, saying that the two boys were like her sons, and that if it was his darkness, then she had a reason to fight it. Or, no, you can't! Grey would flash back to the present, as he's just arriving inside the temple. In Grey's memory of the past, he's up in the mountains, or tells Grey that her training's harsh, but Grey is determined to make it through. She then says that their training is about to begin, and starts stripping. Grey would be shocked, asking what the hell she's doing, and as he protests, he turns to see Leon's doing the same. Ur then explained that to control the cold, you have to become one with it. Grey would reluctantly do so, as he strips himself, and they start training. First off, it'd be the basics, meaning familiarizing with being cold. So he'd just run around and dive in snow, freezing his ass off. And then, the magical training would finally begin. Or explaining that creation magic is one of the most powerful magics because of how free it is. The best type of creation type wizards are those who are able to devote and find their own style, their own form. When they go to the market, the shopkeeper would tell Or that think of her own happiness rather than devoting herself to her two students. Or leaving as they'd watch Leon and Grey discussing their progress and how strong she was. Leon adamantly stating that he wants to fight Or one day and see if he's stronger than their master being his dream. Grey says that it's his dream to defeat Deliora. Once I'm strong enough to defeat that demon, I'm getting out of this Ice Queen's palace. As he says this, Or would punch him on the head. Or leaving while taking Grey and Leon with her. The metaphor obviously being lost on her. Grey would ask when he's going to finally learn some strong magic. Or saying that he already has. Once he finds his own form of creation magic, it can be as strong as Grey wants. Grey doesn't believe that, and subconsciously strips again, or scolding him for that habit, but he would then blame her for his weird quirks. This is also the beginning of what would be the lifelong habit that we all see for the rest of Fairy Tale. Grey would hear some travelers talking about Deliora, leading to the information he gained, as Deliora would be on the northern continent. Grey, Urza, Happy, and Lucy would have seen the runes all tilted and destroyed, deducing it was obviously Natsu and Asta's genius idea. Grey would keep moving forward, as he recalls the situation leading up to Ur's loss of her body, using the ice shell to freeze Deliora. In the present, Grey would then run into Natsu and Leon's fight, Asta still trying to get in edgewise, as he attempts to stop Leon, crossing his arms as he initiates the Iced Shell, the very technique that had been used in order to stop Deliora all those years ago. Grey didn't want Ur to fight Deliora, but she had insisted that 
she would take back her happiness with this trial. Leon begging her to stop, saying that he'll help her fight as he runs forward trying to use the ice shell himself. Ur would cut him off, saying that it's not his time to die, and she would freeze Leon, deactivating the ice shell. Ur would be terrified by his actions, saying that she can't let her son kill himself. She would lose her body, but before she completely turns to ice, she would tell Grey to tell Leon that she died. If Leon found out that she was still alive, incarnated as that ice, he'd spend his entire life trying to figure out a way to turn her back. She'd disappear, turning into ice that seals Deliora. Grey would tell Leon all of this, as Leon would be shocked, and his first reaction would be to deny it. You're lying! You're lying! Ur won't forgive me for telling you, which is why I can't forgive you for hurting my friends. For melting Deliora's ice. For killing our master. Ice Shell! What, what the, the hell do you think you're doing? doing? Both Asta and Natsu would then punch Grey on each side of the face, where he'd be shocked, asking what the hell is up with them. You really were just about to tell him how your master killed herself using this technique and expected us, your friends, not to stop you? I... Before either one can continue talking, Zalti, the one with the lost magic, would have fixed the temple by rewinding time on the entire area, fixing the tilt that was blocking the moon drip. Grey would have told Leon that Ur was still alive in the ice. Leon, as I mentioned before, denying this, states that ice is just ice, stabbing Grey in the stomach with a blade. Grey would tell Leon to retreat, but when Leon doesn't, Grey would then initiate the ice shell again. But Grey is completely serious. This would be when Asta would punch Grey again, deactivating the spell with his anti-magic, saying, Did you not just hear what I just said? We're not gonna let you die, you dumbass! they begin bickering as Grey would start fighting with Asta, calling him a shrimp. As Asta says, I don't care if I'm a shrimp if I get to save my friends! This would be cut short as the tower begins to shake. Outside, Lucy, Urza, and Happy are fighting all of the priests who were helping Leon with the ritual. They'd witnessed the entire untilting of the runes, showing the entire building now falling back into place, Zalti using his lost magic. Natsu would chase after Zalti, telling Grey not to ever use that spell again. Natsu would turn to Asa saying, if Grey tries to do anything, whack him with your sword, as Grey would then grit his teeth. We switch our point of view as we see Natsu chasing down Zalti, attempting to find out what kind of magic he's using, this weird lost magic. But Zalti somehow disappears from Natsu's sight making him have to use his smell as he starts sniffing out where Zalti went. Figuring out that there's a smell of perfume? What a weird old guy. Anyway, Leon would say that he knows his subordinates will finish the ritual, telling Grey to complete his ice shell. This would be when Grey tells Leon not to underestimate Natsu or Asta. His two friends are the strongest in the world. Asta would then smile, thinking of all the training he'd been through, all the times Grey and Natsu made fun of him for not being able to use magic. Everything that Gramps had did for him, the moon drip would begin to pour again. We're now back to where Leon stabs Grey. Seeing this, Asta would go into a rage mode, saying not to hurt his friend. Asta using Black Hurricane, covering his sword with anti-magic, swinging it faster and faster around and blocking all of the magic, melting the ice make magic. As both Grey and Leon's magic get sucked into the whirlwind. Natsu would finally have found Zalti with his smell tracking him down as the two begin their fight. Grey would tell Asta to back off, as he says that he'll take Leon down, the two coming to a fight, as it's now finally over. Grey using ice make magic and proving to Leon once and for all that dual-handed is superior, defeating him. Grey would run with Asta, asking Asta to hold him up, Asta then holding Grey as Grey uses ice to heal his wound. Well, heal is an optional word here, considering that he still has a stab going through his body. He'd freeze it just like Ur had with her leg. Grey would come to the conclusion, as they all head down towards the cavern, seeing Deliora be freed, that it's time to use Ice Shell to seal Deliora once again. No! No! I refuse, Asta would say. Seeing the ice that's sealing Deliora begin to melt, Natsu attacks Toby and Zalti, blasting them with fire dragon magic. This would be when the two would ask you what's really so smart to do around ice. The runes begin to shake, the ceremony reaching its end, as Leon then whispers telling Grey that he did everything to achieve this. Grey says it's pointless, as Leon continues to chastise him for playing around in some guild. I followed Ur's advice, Leon. I found more powerful opponents in the West. 
he talks about his first day at fairy tale meeting asta for the first time asta being the first of the three children to arrive at fairy tale having been raised since a baby by master makarov as well as his older brother being loxus loxus having tormented him as a child for not really being his little brother asta still loved loxus though and so whenever Grey would make fun of Loxus or try and pick a fight with him, Asta would have taken his big bro's side. This was what caused the bickering between Asta and Grey before Natsu had arrived. Grey would have made so many friends at Fairy Tale that this was the perfect way to end it. This is the way. Ice make, ice shell. Grey would try to use his ability to seal off Deliora as Asta screams wait, Asta running forward as he tells Grey to hold it as he then jumps up towards the demon, seeing that it's still unconscious. Zoltu would turn, shocked, as Leon would say, No! What's he doing? Asta would scream as he covers the entire sort of black energy, his anti-magic now growing and growing, as he creates a great black divider, a new spell being created as he slashes Deliora in half, Deliora falling to its side as Leon would be shocked and tears streaming down his face. No! No! It can't be! It's... it's already dead? Leon would fall to his knees, as the demon Deliora would have been slain by Asta. If you guys want to see the next part for what if Asta was in fairy tale, make sure to hit the like button, comment below what you thought, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this from me. We currently just got to the end of the Galuna Island arc, so we'll be finishing off a few things there before we head into the next arc of fairy tale, aka the Phantom Lore arc, where we'll be running into our first other dragon slayer, the Dragon of Steel. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, and goodbye.